everyone, I'm Heather, I'm back for a really quick video, uh, this one to do with the stay at home reading rush tag slash TBR thing. I'm super excited for the reading rush, I will not lie to you, um, in isolation, lockdown, like there's not a lot of things to get excited about, so I'm here for it. Also, Reading Rush has like a special place in my heart because it was the very first readathon I ever did. So like last summer when I started my booktube channel, it was the first thing I ever did and it was awesome. So much fun. And also, I was working through my owls this month and sort of just uh, blew everything a bit too quickly and finished it. Like I picked out I think seven books or something that I was going to read for that um, because I had quite a few audiobooks on the list. I just sort of like got all the way through those. I'm done with those now and I need a new project, unfortunately. So anyway, stay at home reading rush. So the first question is, how is your reading going while staying at home? And um, the actual physical reading hit a bit of a hiccup at the very beginning, I think, of sort of the lockdown. I was a bit sort of like up in the air and like depressed about not being able to go out and stuff like that. Um, and like the physical book reading sort of fell apart. I didn't really do a lot of it, but I've fallen into audiobooks as like a reserve thing to sort of like distract myself and have something exciting to do, blah, blah, blah. And that has been amazing. And I've just been nailing these audiobooks. I've been going through them like crazy. Uh, so reading, still slow, you know, I'm recovering the physical reading slowly. Uh, but the audiobook situation is just a wildfire. Uh, the next question is, where have you been reading at home? And I think the answer is right here in my bedroom slash office. Uh, I sort of wake up in the morning, hit on some audiobook, do a bit of work while uh, the munchkin like watches cartoons in the background. Uh, and then for a bit of lunch break, I might read some actual physical book. You know, like I think the vast majority of the taking in of the literature happens in this isolation box at the minute. It's, it's sunny, it's got a window. I can see people getting overexcited about going outside. It's fine. Next question is the best book you've read in isolation. So I think I was trying to think of this one and it's a bit hard because I've read some pretty good ones and also taken some good ones in via audiobook. And I think probably the best ones are The Testaments by Margaret Atwood um, and Mudlarking by Lara Maclem. So I know that I came really late to the party for the Testaments, but I was waiting for my audiobook app thing from my library to give it to me. There was like a six month hold on people trying to get this audiobook. And I'm glad that I waited because it was magnificent. The book was amazing, really interesting. I was really worried that it wouldn't be like a really good sequel, you know, like it wouldn't hold up to the awesomeness of The Handmaid. I was wrong. It was so fantastic. Um, also, the audiobook, you worry. You're like, ooh, is it going to be, you know, even if it's a really good book, is the audiobook going to do it justice? Sometimes people don't read it properly, you know? Uh, but this one was just so good. Very good. Also, Mudlarking by Lara Maclem. Like, I've already talked a lot about that one in the last couple of videos. Um, it's just basically a woman in London who spends her time, like, wandering the Thames in London, like, the foreshore, and, like, looking for items and sort of historical things and archaeology and blah, blah, blah. Um, and it sort of said about those are things that she'd found and the history of it and everything. And it's had me thinking loads. Like, I don't know if this is a thing, but it's had me thinking loads about giving it a try on the taff. <laughs> So, uh, the, the, like, the River Taff runs through Cardiff, and it's, you know, just as historical, really. Okay, it's run through Cardiff since Cardiff was a thing, you know, like, at least since the Romans, it, there's been sort of, you know, continual habitation on the Taff, especially, like, in the sort of city centre area. Um, and, you know, surely, like, I know that the river's been moved, like, it was recoursed in order to sort of claim land back or whatever and sort of stop a flooding zone. But, um, so was the Thames was recoursed, I think, and it still has loads of stuff on the foreshore that, you know, was lost over centuries. So 
I reckon the TAF has just as many of those things. And like, I tried to give it a bit of a Google to see if anybody found anything really good on the TAF. And I can't really find anything. Um, so I'm not sure if it's a thing, but I don't know why it wouldn't be a thing. So I need to, I need to look into this more. Anyone who lives in Cardiff or anyone who knows anything about like, you know, river, foreshore, mudlarking or anything, you know, like is, is stuff in the TAF other than dead bodies and used condoms. Is that like a thing, you know, like good stuff? Can I go and find stuff uh, and not, you know, get stuck by a needle or anything? Let me know. Uh, next question is, what's your favorite feel good book? And this one's hard, okay? And I think the problem is that I don't really get on with feel good books. I like to feel good. You know, and I feel like I'm a relatively feel-good person. And if something's too grim, I complain about it. Like, why was it so grim? But I think in the end, stuff that's really feel-good and really happy, I tend not to rate it, I think. Like, I always read it because I'm like, woo, yeah, I need to feel good. Um, and then I read it and I'm like, well, that was a that was a three, you know, out of five. Altogether forgettable. Um, but I do think there's one like that has stayed with me a really long time and made me feel amazing. Okay, not just as I was reading it, but for years afterwards, it's completely changed my life. You know what I'm gonna say right now if you've watched any of my videos. But I'm gonna say it anyway because I feel like I need to change your life by spreading the love of this book. Which is uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up uh, by Marie Kondo. Like... I'm not gonna go into it again. You've probably heard my spiel about this book about a thousand times, but like, even now, okay, to feel good, I get rid of stuff. You know, I just literally hold everything. Does this spark joy? Of course it doesn't, because I just accumulate crap, okay? I'm like 1980s American through and through, and I just acquire crap for no reason, and I need to get rid of it. Um, and yeah, so it's like really feel good, I reckon, in that way. Okay, so the next question is, a book you wish to buy or borrow from the library? <sighs> and the answer to this makes me so angry at the circumstances of my life. So I have several holds out in the library all the time, just sort of like several gazillion holds all at once. Um, and some of them are quite long waits, you know, even though the book has been out a really long time, it's not particularly like, you know, new or whatever, and still a gazillion people always have it on hold. So once it finally gets to me, I start counting it down. Like it tells you the number that you are in the queue, um, and it tells you like uh, the status and everything of your order. So I've been watching Kindred, right, by Octavia Butler ages like watching it like go down in the number it finally gets to me it's ready to be me and the status says in transit like it's literally on its way to me shut everything down pandemic closed libraries just death bad like and it's just frozen like that now the library app still says in transit with me as the next person it's on its way to me forevermore now basically and i'll never have it like if i go to the library right now and look in the window is it like in a pile just like right in the window like that like ready like ready to come to me but not quite there you know it's the worst kind of torture i reckon for that so annoying so the next question is an author you want to shout out. And I don't really know what authors I want to shout out. Like all of my favorite authors, I think are quite often everyone else's favorite authors as well. So I tend not to sort of like introduce anyone to new authors. Like they're always authors other people tended to know. You know, like I think I introduce people to books that they didn't really have on their radar. But when I sort of talk about my favorite authors, no one's ever really like, oh, I've never heard of that person, Margaret Atwood, before, you know, like, um, <clears throat> so I was trying to think of, like, a person I know specifically, like, as an actual, like, face-to-face -face encounter with a person who actually, like, is an author as well, that I could say about. And so I thought of one, which is TJ Brown, or Tim Brown, I think it's TJ Brown on his, like, his like pen name is tj brown uh, so he wrote one that's called the unhappy medium um that's really quite like terry pratchett type stuff you know like um 
uh, like loads of words, um, like quite sort of long, you can get really into it, like really clever. I imagine loads of things went over my head, um, but it's sort of like, uh, you know, every sentence is sort of a new laugh, a sort of dark humour, dry humour. Um, and I, I really quite liked it. Like, I wouldn't say it was 100% my thing because that's not, I can never get on with Terry Pratchett really. Um, but I understand why loads and loads of people, like he's got like a quite a long following just by the fact that he's like really, um, you know, low published, is that the word? Like small published? Anyway, his books are on Amazon, TJ Brown, The Unhappy Medium, there's also a sequel, there's also an audiobook. So I reckon anyone who's into Terry Pratchett should 100% check out that guy. Um, I follow his posts online as well, and he's always like got some sort of like dark, hilarious thing to say, like really grim, but also super funny. So I reckon he's a good shout out. Okay, so the last question is what is my Reading Rush TBR? So I'm pretty excited about this, it was pretty like anguishing, you know trying to think about what I wanted to do because I want them to be physical books because I need to introduce that back into my life at the minute. I need to get back onto it. It's my first love, you know, and without it, I'm nothing. So I need to just push myself. But also, I gotta be easy on my life at the minute and the audiobooks are going down really well. So I want it to be situations where it can be both a physical book and an audiobook that I can sort of go between given my mood. So I've come up with the four that I need and I'm going to try to do all four, sort of one a day. Um, maybe a bit ambitious at this time, but the reading rush in the summer, I did the seven, one a day for a week and it worked out quite fine. It was like a bit of a struggle at times, but oh, I'm down for a challenge, right? Okay, so the first one, oh shit, the first one is to read a book with a house on the cover. So I'm going to read it. Uh, Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich. Is that how you say that? I don't really know. And you will note, please, that there are tiny little houses all over here because it's like a it's like a map of London. So I'm not cheating. It does have a house on it. Uh, anyway, this book I really want to get to. I'm really excited. It's sort of like um, a mystery story, like an old school like London mystery meets Harry Potter basically so it's like this guy he is a policeman or a detective or whatever in London and he sort of is inducted into like the super secret like magical like department of the police that deals with like yeah magical crimes and things like that so obviously it's not like Harry Potter and that everyone knows about magic or whatever it's that he didn't know that magic existed and now suddenly he does and now he's got to like solve all these crimes and stuff to do with magic. Um, I think he like ends up getting inducted into this like, uh, like wizard, um, like apprentice program or something like that. And then he's got to sort of fight various things like, um, like demon possession and stuff. <laughs> like people who do bad things and like kill people because they're possessed and stuff. Anyway, I think I think it's gonna be really good. I'm really excited. Loads of people have said it's really amazing and I wanted to get to it for ages but haven't quite had the time. So boom, I'm excited. Has a house on the cover. Okay, so the next prompt is one that you read in one room the whole time or one place the whole time. And I think this one's gonna have to be an audiobook because like I have to work, I have to do things, I have to move around. Like the only time that I'm probably gonna be like literally in the same room for ages is when I'm working. So I won't be able to really read for that amount of time. It'll have to be just an audiobook. But I think I found a good one. It's called This Is The Time War by Amal Al Mokhtar um, and Max Gladstone, I think. I'll do them up here somewhere too verify what they actually are if I've made that up. Uh, but I don't really know a whole lot about this one except that it was on NPR's list of like um, the best books for the year or whatever. Um, anyone who watches my channels knows how much I love the NPR list. I will link it below so that you also can be enlightened into the awesomeness of the NPR book concierge. But um, this one apparently is like in the future or like in space or like it's like a sci-fi type thing where there's a war going on, like a time war or some sort of like big like galactic war or something, some sort of sci-fi war. And the world is dying, like they're losing the war or the planet is like they're destroying the planet or something. It's grim. 
on this like army commander guy finds a note uh, and he sort of like reads it and it's apparently a note from another commander and they end up sort of like engaging in a correspondence between each other and they sort of grow to like each other and have a really close bond but obviously they're commanders of different armies so one is on one side the other is on the other side and they're fighting against each other and they have to sort of keep their bond secret because <laughs> obviously if you're caught having a really close bond with the commander of another army you're probably going to be shot or whatever i don't know uh but apparently it's really good loads of people have either said it was the most amazing book or it was the worst book and they dnf'd it like most of the people who dnf'd it were just too confused they're like i spent the first like several chapters just confused as hell still don't know what's going on and i had to just give up on it um but like the loads of people that really liked it they were like this was weird but awesome I feel like that's gonna be me, hopefully. Um, if anything, it's really short and it's just an audiobook. So even if I'm sort of a bit lost, it won't drag on for ages. So, um, anyway. The next one is to read a book set somewhere you wish you could go. So obviously, like I spent ages trying to find one to do with just like a really quiet, calm beach. But obviously people don't really write books about people sitting on beaches for four days just straight wouldn't be a very good book so that didn't really pan out but I did find another one I've always 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 wanted to go to Japan and I love sort of like Japanese culture and like Japanese books and everything so one that Sarah from Your Two Shelf has been talking about recently is uh, Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi Oh shit, I probably just butchered that, but what can I do? <clears throat> um, so this one is apparently about a cafe in Tokyo, uh, like a family run, like mom and pop type cafe where you can time travel. You go there and you have to sit in like the same chair and you can only time travel for the amount of time it takes your coffee to get cold. Um, I don't really know anything else about it. Like what people have been saying, I think, is that they found it really heartwarming and cute. So, you know, uh, I'm... I'm here for that at the minute, so I'm excited. Um, okay, so the last one is to read a book that will make you smile. And I had to go with sort of like a relatively safe option, you know, to know that it was gonna make me smile. Um, but also I don't wanna read a book I've already read because I'm not that kind of person. So I've, I'm going with a series I know I already like, which is uh, the Longmire series. Um, I got stuck into this uh, from Liz Schubert who said on her channel that it was amazing and I'm so glad that I have found her in my life because this has changed me. Um, okay, so it's quite like the Tony Hillerman series that I like, uh, which is sort of a detective set on an Indian reservation. Um, this one is sort of similar in that it's Western. So it's about this guy, Longmire, who's the sheriff of this tiny town in Wyoming and he's a bit rugged you know, like hooded brows and sort of doesn't say a whole lot and he sort of walks slow, you know, like the Duke. Um, and I don't know why I love stuff like that. I think, I don't know, it's hard to say. I just love it. It's like a sort of modern type, like Western, I reckon. Um, apparently it's a TV show as well on, um, like the History Channel or A&E or something like this back home. But I obviously don't get that channel here in the UK. And um, I think it was supposed to be on Netflix as well, but I haven't seen it yet. Maybe there's no call for it in the UK, which is so sad. I want to see it so badly. Um, I think I can probably get it on something where I have to pay for it. In which case, I'm going to have to think long and hard about where my desires truly lie. Uh, I'll probably hit a point in isolation where I've already paid for Emma, okay? Have you seen? You can sort of like, Emma was released earlier, like the um, the new version of Emma, you know, like the new movie Emma was in theaters right when all this sort of chaos kicked off and they didn't get like the full amount of money that they felt like they would, they should have had, you know? So they instead released it early to home viewing, um, but they charged an absolute bomb for it. It was 16 pounds. And I sort of looked at it for a good three weeks, you know, just sitting in isolation and going, oh, I wish this was cheaper. I just can't. That's just a steal. They're just raping my wallet right the way through. And I just can't. 
Um, but this weekend, I finally cracked. I paid £16 to watch Emma one time. It was a rental. I don't even get to keep it. Um, so I think probably, let's just be honest, even if this costs absolutely loads for the series to see this show, I'm probably gonna, probably gonna make it happen eventually. Uh, right, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you have an amazing reading rush. I've been really enjoying watching everyone else's tags and TBRs and everything and sort of writing various things down, ideas for later. Um, so I will see you around for the reading rush. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.